What's up, Centennial? This is your favorite host, Cami G, and welcome to episode 21. Hey, my name is Saray Rodelo. I'm a junior. Hello, my name is Margarita Danilova, and I am a sophomore. I did get into art when I was like uh, four years old. I was so, so in love with colors and figures and then painting everywhere in the house. So I just started painting the floor in the walls and then I just started loving art. Having started drawing since childhood, I was seized by the opportunity to create and transfer my thoughts onto the paper uh, because drawing for me is a great way to express my emotions, capture memorable moments and even use my free time constructively. GHP is a governor's honor program, uh, so you basically have the opportunity to go to a summer program in Georgia Southern University uh, based on your career. I decided to participate in the GHP program, ultimately to grow my skills, uh, to gain academic enrichment and personal fulfillment. My experience in GHP, I can describe it as something really fun and something really interesting because you are there, uh, people, professional people is interviewing you and then you can show your perspective and everything. For the future, I'm looking for be more professional. I learn more graphic design and more 3D design actually, do more sculpture and then go into uh, Renaissance art and more hyper-realistic art. I plan to develop my professional skills. I want to learn how to work more with paints and perhaps start illustrating books because they are exactly where I get my inspiration. The Centennial Art Program is uh, supporting me by giving me all of the materials that I need to make art. Teachers are really supportive with you, they are uh, fun with you, they just help you. They gave us support in what we are doing. As some of you may know, students from Centennial will be traveling all around the world. We have representatives in Spain, France, New York, Orlando, and also the C100 department will be traveling to California for Student Television Network. Next up, we have some interviews of the students who will be attending. My name is Camila Gomez. I'm in 10th grade, and the project I'm working on is Movie Trailer. My name is Ethan. I'm a senior and I'm going to be working on Crazy Eights and Silent Film. Hi, my name is Kathleen Jordan and I'm a junior. My name is Ria Labudi. I'm in uh, the 10th grade and I'm working on the NatPack. 
Um, my name is Georgia Hip. I am in 11th grade and I'm going to be in the Crazy 8 documentary in the human interest. What I'm most excited for is definitely get to meet the Pacific Ocean because I've never been to that coast of the United States. I'm most excited for the Crazy 8 short film. I'm really excited to be around like a bunch of people that have the same interests as me. I think it's going to be a really fun environment. I'm most excited for creating just amazing films, having the time to go out and compete with a ton of different people and schools. I do feel prepared. I feel like our group this year is really prepared and we've gone really good so far and we got good cameras, good um, equipment going, so I think we're going to do really good. I do feel prepared for STN because we've done a lot of planning before we've gone and a lot of practicing, so I know that we'll be ready when we're there. My planning process has been a lot of watching like previous winners and like reaching out to some places in Long Beach and looking at like the area, just getting a feel for like what the environment is like. I feel pretty prepared because Mr. Binkner has definitely taught us well and has prepared us for how to do things like this. I do feel prepared from watching like the past winners and like talking with my group, but I also feel like there's a lot of planning that needs to be done, but we'll, we'll figure it out. The biggest challenge at STN I think is going to be on the short film. Um, just because it's so much to do in a short amount of time. Not being able to just chill out. I think the constant work is going to not get to me, but just tax. In my opinion, I think one of the biggest challenges is going to be getting enough B-roll for all of the things we're going to have to do, and then also timing our stuff right and making sure we have enough time to edit and shoot everything that we need to shoot. I think silent film is going to win because the people that are in that group so far, I mean, the work that they do is amazing and they definitely are really good at the whole silent film thing, so I think they're going to do really good. However, I think Movie Trailer has a really good chance of winning too. I think we're going to have our Crazy 8 short film win and the silent film that I'm working on win. I think the short film is looking really good. They have a lot of good planning going so far and a lot of good work from what I've seen, so I think they're going to do pretty good. I think all of our segments are going to win because the loft is the best, obviously, and so we're just going to win everything. All of them, pretty much every single one of them, including Nat Pack, because, you know, <laughs> you see this, dude? Like it. Hey, bud. How's it going, big dog? Hey, man, um, I don't know if I ever told you, I was, uh, I was raised as an only child, which really made my sister angry. Ha! Hmm. You know, Mr. Manny, as a matter of fact, I am trying to uh, eat a little healthier these days. My buddy Joe just told me about this new Dolly Parton diet. It's, uh, it's great. We're seeing all kinds of results. In fact, Uh, wow, uh, uh, Gary Bud, everybody. Gary Bud. <laughs> Tip your waiters. Tip your waiters. Man, Bud, the uh, other day my wife told me, told me that I don't give her enough privacy. Well, I mean, at least that's what she wrote in her diary. This doesn't turn. Uh, hey, Manny. Yeah, what's up? Um, so I'm looking to buy a lighthouse to live in. Nothing too flashy, though. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's a good one. Uh, hey, bud. Uh, I learned how Moses uh, used to make his coffee. Uh, he, he, he brews it. He, brew, he brewed it? He brews. He brews. Uh, hey, uh, Mr. Manny. I'm super stressed out about parking these days. I'm going through a lot. I'm feeling 22. <laughs>
In other news, a brawl broke out at Six Flags last weekend that left a 15-year-old boy in critical condition. Geez, not only do you have to wait two hours to get on a ride, but now you have to go through this. Moral of the story, don't go to Six Flags. It's not worth it. Dune Part 2 has finally been released following a story of... <sighs> Can you stop? It's not that serious. He's bald. I think what Kay is trying to say is that Austin Butler, the infamous method actor who played Elvis in the Elvis movie, went bald for his villain role in Dune Part 2, and yet he still can't get rid of that annoying Elvis voice. You don't get it. Please, just get it together. Well, on this week's N10 News, the power keeps going out. Guys, what's going on? I was in the bathroom when the power was going out. I thought someone was going to try to possess me in the stalls. Okay, well, I was in French class wondering when they were going to tell us to leave. And that's it for your weekly update this week. Thank you and good morning. Welcome to Man Up the Street, North Point Mall. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> well, Question one, what century are we in? 21st. 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 Okay. Uh, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? Woodchuck chuck could chuck wood. Woodchuck could chuck a whole lot of wood. Woodchuck could chuck wood. You got like a rough estimate, you think? Um, maybe like. <laughs> like a lot. Like a lot, yeah. yeah. Um, what hemisphere are we in? Southern. <laughs> Alright, what century is it? The cent. Oh, this is the 21st century? It's wrong. I'm sorry. What hemisphere are we in? Western hemisphere. That's also wrong. I'm sorry. Oh, I know what you guys are doing. I know what you guys are doing. <laughs> no, we're not doing it. Uh, who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Oh, wait. OK, I learned this in social studies. I forgot, though. Thomas Jefferson? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what happened, dude. I don't know. Uh, we're asking uh, like, like IQ questions, you know, like how uh, smart no, you are. I am, I am a, no, I have no IQ. <laughs> no, no IQ. <laughs> um, what's your hottest take? Hottest take? <laughs> Teslas are actually not that bad. Not in terms of economic though, or like, or like whatever. Yeah, we're done here. Yeah, we're fine. done here. Fine. We're done. You have a, you have a day. Hey, more specific, I've been living in Georgia for over 20 years and I don't like grits. You don't like grits? Don't like grits. Don't care for it. <laughs> grits are horrible, bro. Every <laughs> yeah. person I meet, they say yeah. they love grits, bro. I gotta, that's a good right. one. So Y'all are crazy. Grits are amazing. <laughs> If a candle burns upside down atop a tree, right? How many goldfish can fit in a two by four box? No. <laughs> I wouldn't think you'd have any goldfish in a box. Yeah. Did you come up with this riddle yourself? No, it was on top 2,000 riddles. I'll give you a very simple answer. Mm -hmm. A lot. A lot? No, 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 but if the candle's upside down. If the candle's upside down, what's I got to do with goldfish? Because it's like, how many can you fit in the box? <laughs> I don't know. They can be Nah. Was it now? Where did, where did this place on the leaderboard? 2000. 2000? Yeah. I'm now going to enter the back of Spencer's. Whatever, you know, especially being in the sporting world, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing here um, in the next couple of months, my 25th anniversary for the Atlanta Open, so I'm inviting all the best players in the world. And that's what you guys, this is your homework. You're <laughs> going to go home and YouTube squash. And I always say real men play with small. <laughs>
So I've gotten a lot of requests to look at albums, so about a month ago, I decided to do some fan requests. Since then, I've gotten double the amount of requests that I had before. So here we are, we're looking at three more albums popularly demanded. So this is a really popular album. It's like the biggest thing that came out in 2023. And overall, it's pretty good, but I'd say it's kind of overhyped. It's a solid 8 out of 10, and I can say that confidently. The best song is Fiend, and the worst is probably K-pop. The new Green Day album, Savior, isn't really all that good. It kind of radiates um, back in the good old days sort of energy where they're trying to reclaim the popularity that they had back when American Idiot came out. Overall, kind of underwhelming from a band that has made some good songs and some great albums. The best song is probably 1981, and the worst is definitely The American Dream is Killing Me, which is just a shameful recreation of American Idiot. This is a classic album. I love this album. This album is great. Overall, love Radiohead. This isn't their best album. They're a very good band. They made some really good things. This is amazing, but not by Radiohead standards. Overall, it's, it's really solid, and I recommend that anyone and everyone listens to it, even if you don't like punk rock. Um, solid eight out of 10. The best song is Just, without a doubt, and the worst is probably Bones. What's up Centennial and welcome back to Flying Facts with Delta Mike. Post-COVID aviation travel recovery has been very strong. So strong in fact that two new airlines formed. Those two airlines are Breeze Airways as well as Avello Airways. This edition of Flying Facts will be kind of a two-parter. This edition will be about Breeze while the next edition will be about Avello. Breeze Airways is founded by aviation entrepreneur David Nealman, who you may remember from the JetBlue episode. When Breeze Airways first started, they initially operated the Embraer E-190 and Embraer E-195 aircraft. However, in 2022, the airline took delivery of their very first Airbus A220. This aircraft is a quintessential part of their operation and is the main aircraft they use today. By the end of 2024, all the Embraers will be retired. Breeze Airways' first flight was on May 27, 2021 from Tampa International Airport to Charleston, South Carolina. The Breeze Airways operates some pretty unusual routes that you wouldn't expect for an airline to do. In fact, over 50% of their routes have no competition on them. It's sort of like a Velo. Breeze Airways is trying to be different from other ultra-low-cost carriers like Spirit of Frontier and trying to be more like a Velo. That's it for this week's Centennial. I hope you guys loved our episode and enjoy your four-day weekend. Go Knights!